I'm in rural Lancashire in the Hodder Valley near the village of Sladeburn. Specifically, this is Proctor's Farm where they've allowed me to come and have a look round their hydroponic growing shed, Fast Grass, where they're growing barley seed into sprouts like this in just seven days. Judith runs the growing shed. Thank you very much for letting us take a look around. So, in a nutshell, you're taking barley seed, sprouting it into, well, these barley shoots. But what are you feeding? We're feeding limousine cattle, the pedigree cattle. So it's important that they get a nutritious green feed that they can have throughout the winter while they're inside. They're not being fed on the, we can't leave them outside because the grass is not nutritious during the winter time and there's very little of it. So they're inside eating this along with the silage and a small amount of concentrate. Onset of winter at the moment then, the, the, the cows are in the buildings until around May next year. That's is, right, yeah. It, does the barley supplement silage and other concentrates? Yes, it does, yeah. It's, uh, it's important nutritious product that, uh, that we feed to the animals. So take us through the process. We're here at the mouth of the hopper. Um, is there anything specific about the quality of the barley seed to, that's being used? This is the barley that we use. It's a, a malting grade barley, and that's important because it's highly, it's a high germination grade. So large amounts of the seed, something up to 90 plus percent, will germinate. It's also important in that it's a clean sample and therefore you don't get a lot of chaff in it which would cause problems in the unit. Uh, it doesn't have any additional chemicals that it would have if it was being used in the field. So what's next in the sprouting process then? We put this barley dry into trays and then put it in racks in the growing shed. Let's take a look. This is the growing room, racked up with trays of barley seed growing into sprouts. And Judith, thank you, you've laid out some trays of different days of progress. It's a seven day progress at the moment, I understand. That's correct, yeah. What have we got then? This is today, we put dry seed into the trays it's obviously not dry now, it's had its first watering, so it's damp. But even so, there are some dry spots in it until it gets fully soaked. And how often is the um, watering process? The watering takes place every two hours for 30 seconds. It's automatically controlled. Day one, you can see very small rootlets appear, little white blobs basically at the end of the seed. Not a lot looks as though it's happened but the seed is fully soaked by this time. Day two, you can see that the rootlets have grown slightly and there's one or two small shoots appearing. Day three, you can actually see a green haze where the shoots are actually appearing on the top there. The shoots have grown slightly more. This is day four. As you can see, there's quite a bit of development yeah. from day three. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it if you didn't know it was true, the difference between. It's one day's growth. Shoots have grown. Day five. Once again, you can see that the growth's been added on and also the root mat has started to form. So you can see there it's a bit, it's held together, not completely, but there is a root mat forming. Day six, as you can see, compared to day five, the growth is greater, the shoots are longer and the mat has formed. Day seven, once again, there's continued growth on the shoots and the mat has formed there. 
and it's at day seven that the product goes out to feed the animals. There would be no point growing it any further because all that happens is the shoots open out into blades and it's somewhere between day six and day seven that the best product is formed. What's the climate of the growing shed then? It obviously has to be climate controlled because it's, you can make it whatever you wish. And at the moment, it's running at 21 degrees centigrade and round about 85% humidity. There's underfloor heating and air ducting, which makes, that's heating and air circulation that's required. So whatever the weather outside, you can have your own ideal climate in here. The other thing that's required is the watering and for that we have overhead sprinklers. Also looking around Fastgrass Hydroponics today were a group of young farmers from South Wales and they got the chance to ask Judith questions on the system and process including on cost effectivity and also future energy. The costs obviously are the labour and energy. <coughs> energy is a big problem, so you'd look at something, you know, you'd have solar panels, yeah. or you'd have a windmill, yeah. or you, you know, you'd look yeah. at other ways uh, of doing it. That's the principle, that's going to get better to the time as technology gets yes. better. Yes, yeah. Feeding time. The full sprout is fed to the animals, including the root mat. Normally, this is done by a machine with an auger bucket. But today, with lots of guests on site, they're doing it by hand. 